We're going to start with a blank live project. First, let's remove any MIDI channels since we don't really need them for this. And second, if they aren't already activated, let's show the send and return sections. Here are the send sections, which are connected to each track, and here are the return sections. By default, there are two, A and B, but more can be added if needed. You see that a return channel is almost like a regular channel, except it doesn't have any stop buttons shown in the cell, so you can't put any samples here. And it doesn't have an audio from setting. That's because it is the send sections of the other tracks that actually control the signal that is received. Think of these as small specialized mixers that control the effects loop. This means that you can use a return track to save processing power by sending multiple channel signals to a single chain of effects instead of having to duplicate that effect over and over on many, many tracks. With external effects, this is especially important since you can't use multiple effects on individual tracks unless you have multiple physical effect units and enough channels on your audio interface to support it. The return channel does have an audio 2, however. In a live performance situation, this can just be set to master since you only want to be able to hear the external effect. But in the case of recording, this needs to be captured. While Live 7 can use live effects and instruments during a final mixdown, which isn't shown in this tutorial, it can be cumbersome for a lot of situations. So what you can do is send the process signal to its own channel and record it. Then you can fine tune the balance between the original dry signal and the newly recorded processed or wet signal. Before we set that up, let's finish configuring the return channel. You can find the external audio effect device in the live device browser under audio effects. Let's drag it to the return channel. Now let's configure the device. Audio 2 is the channel or channels on your audio interface that will send a signal to the effect unit. In our case, it is outputs 5 and 6. Audio from is the AI input or inputs that will return the signal from the effect unit. In our case, inputs 3 and 4. Also notice the gain, dry wet, phase, and latency settings. These can all be used to fine tune the signal. If the latency encountered when using the external effect is sufficient to be a problem, you might be able to use the latency compensation to improve it. Just know that there are limits to doing this. Let's make sure that the effects loop is now working. Keep the audio 2 on the return track set to master. Now let's get a source to process. This is just a simple drum loop and on here it has automatically renamed the track dry. That's my own setting and it's just to make the tutorial a little bit more clear. So let's start hearing the sample. Now make sure that your effects unit is plugged in and on and let's turn up the send dial for return A. Notice the level meters on both the return channel and on the external audio effect plugin have begun to show signal level. Let's turn it up a bit more until we can hear the effect. So just a simple reverb. If you happen to see that only the audio 2 is showing signal but audio from is not, check the physical effect unit because this means that the signal is being sent to it but not returned from it. So let's make any signal level adjustments. You always want to make sure that the signal level coming back in is as strong as possible. You can always mix it down later, but it's always much harder to mix it upward. Okay, we've got a good strong signal without clipping. Now, let's create a channel to record the process signal. We're just going to rename it as wet, just for clarity for the tutorial. And now let's set the return track to send to this new channel. Let's play it again. Now you might ask, why can't we hear the process signal? That would be because the monitoring setting on the wet channel is currently set to auto, which means that you will only be able to hear the incoming signal when the channel is recording, or whether this particular channel is playing back something that has already been recorded, like a sample. So 
Let's set it for to in for the moment, just to make sure that it's, the loop is working correctly. And it is. Now we can hear the return to effects again. You can either keep it set to in or return it to auto, which we'll do, because when you arm the track, monitoring will be automatically activated. Now let's record our newly processed loop. Now that we have a recorded loop, let's disarm the track. And let's adjust the loop so that we have nice, evenly divisible length. So we have four beats. Once it's recorded, you don't need to keep using the effects loop. So you can either turn the send dial down. You could also disable the return track. Or, again, just make sure that the wet channel is set to auto or off. Now let's play back both the dry sample and the wet sample. By balancing the channel faders between the two, we can achieve the desired level of effect for the track. And the great thing is that we're not stuck with this like we would be if we had externally mixed the dry wet channel through the hardware. We can adjust this at any point during the arranging or mix down process. Additionally, we can also add other effects, either to the wet channel itself. Let's do that now. And like with all effects, these can be adjusted at any point during the process. Or, if you want, you could have actually added additional effects to the return chain itself. The only difference here is the wet channel would record the result of all the effects chained together and you wouldn't be able to change them after the fact. If processing power is an issue, that's always an option, but in my opinion, if you do have the processing power and the right audio hardware, to be able to do it this way, to only use external effects when absolutely necessary, and to use software effects that you can change at any time is much more flexible. For the external effect itself, this is unavoidable because of setup, but like I said, for any audio units or VST effects or the built-in live effects, you could change them at any time. Well, I hope that you found this tutorial useful. This is definitely a feature of live that is very, very powerful for those of us that have external effects that we either love or have certain qualities that are not easily replaced with pure software effects. If you have any other ideas for tutorials that you'd like to see for live or logic, let me know. Email them to tutorials at mobiusb.com. Thanks for watching.